Anybody been on a plane recently? We're doing that again. <laughs> so when you fly a lot, as some of us have been doing, and I've been doing a fair bit of recently, you know that the movement is first you take off, and then you touch down, right? That's how planes work. But on the human journey, that's not how it works. It's the other way around. First you go down, you descend into the soul, and then you transcend into spirit. We are invited to go down so we can climb up. Anybody here a U2 fan? Yeah. <laughs> if you want to kiss the sky, better learn how to kneel. Come on, people, this is the gospel. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm aging myself. In the Kabbalah, in the Jewish mystical tradition, we say, Yerida letzorech aliyah. You gotta descend so that you ascend. You gotta like really go into the depths in order to rise. That song we just sang, Mikdash Melech Ir Melucha, imagine the, the majesty, the regal of rising your full potential. You can't do it without being aware of the rubble. And we don't really like to do that. But it's a two-step dance that I want to talk about tonight. I'm calling it downside up. We do this privately. Whether you like to or not, sooner or later, every single one of us will have to face the abyss. Sometimes it's illness. Sometimes it's death. Sometimes it's whatever reason that makes us look squarely at our own mortality. It could be the political news that breaks our heart and gets us sobbing. But we're going to go down into the basement. And if we know how to work there, we will figure out how to come up. And there's a difference between soul, which is where we're invited down, and spirit, where we're invited up. I want to talk about that in a moment as well. And that has to do on some level with where we are right now on the calendar. The sacred season that we are so privileged to be living in right now. So let's start with a holiday that some of you here tonight on Zoom or in the room might be either aware of or maybe even observing or friends and relatives who are. And that is Eid al-Fitr, the end of Ramadan. After a month of fasting and nightly feasting, the Muslim community, billions of people all over the planet, are celebrating the revelation of the Quran with a feast tonight. And the month of coming closer to yourself ends with a rising. But you gotta fast in order to feast. You gotta go through the contraction in order to be in the celebration. Ramadan ends tonight. Eid Mubarak to our Muslim community friends. And having just spent time in Israel and Palestine, it was meaningful, and I'll talk more about that later, to have those holidays celebrated. Easter was just finished. What is Easter about? And I know there are some Christian leaders and people in the room, but you cannot have the resurrection on Sunday without the crucifixion on Friday. You gotta go through the pain what did it rise? That echoes Passover that we just came out of. You cannot have the liberation without the narrowness of bondage. That's what we celebrate each year, the movement, the contraction into expansion. And then comes the Omer, these 50 nights we count from the narrowness of leaving Egypt towards being on the summit of Sinai. It's a metaphoric mythic journey from the lowest to the highest every year. 1969, Earth Day was invented. You can't really be in the space of honoring Mother Earth and the ecosystem we have to protect without getting our fingers down in the soil of where we come from. Get into that compost 
of how we love and must take care of our earth. Got to go down to go up. And finally, in the spectrum of holy days, we just came out of Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Memorial Day, with all of its rubble. And we're moving into this coming week, Yom HaZikaron, the Israeli Memorial Day for all those who died in wars and in terror attacks, into Yom HaAtzma'ut, Israel's Independence Day, 75 years later. And for those of us who are engaged with the Palestinian-Israeli ongoing struggle for liberation, this is also the time in which we are acknowledging the terrible pain that the Palestinian community has paid and is paying. But you cannot have Independence Day without Memorial Day. And it's a neurotic 48 hours of grief into growth, of sadness into joy. It's like you couldn't get the epitome of the Jewish experience more that. Passover into Shavuot, Memorial into Independence, descend to ascend. Do you see the pattern? All these holy days, all this season, the springtime is about the descend to ascend. You gotta reckon in order to rise. Now think about that in our own human journeys. Again, I don't know all of us here in the room and in the Zoom room tonight, but I'm gonna make a safe bet that we have all, for some reason or the other, had the occasion of sobbing at some point this week, this month, this year. Found ourselves in the dumps, in the blues, in the difficulties of being human. Now we live in a culture that doesn't do grief very well. We live in a culture that prefers that you say, have a nice day. How you doing? I'm sorry grandma died. Please get back to work. We don't do soul very well. We do spirit. Great. How's your spirit? Woohoo! Enlightenment. <laughs> but soul is where we grieve, where we cook, where we mourn, where we become who we need to become. And if you don't go down, you don't go up. And this culture doesn't do the descent so well. We're so afraid of really being vulnerable. So I want to quote to you a very short quote about what it means to go in, to go deep, to go down in order to rise from a book that I've discovered recently and that I'm really excited about. And there are friends here from our Generate group that's thinking seriously about becoming and eldering. So you're about to get that on the, on the curriculum, and all of you, if you want. The book is by uh, Bill Plotkin, who is a therapist and a thinker and an echo healer. And the book is called Soulcraft. And he writes the following. But the difference between soul and spirit. Soul is where we descend. Spirit is how we rise. They're like the hues of a candle, of the flame, right? It's one flame, but it's not. Soul, says Plotkin, by soul I mean the vital, mysterious, wild core of our individual selves, an essence unique to each person, qualities found in layers of the self much deeper than our personalities. When we go into soul, that's what we go into. Spirit is the single great eternal mystery that permeates and animates everything in the universe and yet transcends all. Ultimately, each soul exists as an agent for spirit. Soul is where we are each completely unique and to be who we are in the world, we got to access soul. But spirit is where we're all the same. And to be in that place of unity and oneness and commitment to each other, we got to go through the pain of what does it mean for me to figure out my uniqueness, what I have to leave behind, who do I have to wrestle with inside to become me. 
The problem in our world that doesn't give too much space for the soul is that we got to do it ourselves in this culture, in this moment. And that connects to Earth Day. Plotkin writes a lot about nature, how nature in this culture has become postcards. But really, nature, Earth, who we are, needs us to go down into the depths, into the depths of the soil. Too many of us lack intimacy with the natural world and with our souls, and consequently, we are doing untold damage to both. If we don't do the hard work of the descent to where there is grief, to where we face what is broken, we won't heal. If we won't look eye to eye into the issues of the day from the way we are destroying the earth, and that's grief, to the way racism is rupturing lives every day, including this week in this country, if we won't go to that place, we won't fix it. If we won't acknowledge the homophobia and transphobia and misogyny and human violence that is part of the basements in our soul we don't want to deal with, it won't be dealt with. It won't just go away. So going into the descent means we begin the work of ascent. What's happening in Israel right now, and I'll talk about that over dinner for whoever wants to listen, is that the basements are open. The problems are in the daylight. And we're going down to go up and fix. And that's part of what's happening in this country. And so much more has to happen for each of us individually and for us as a collective. You don't descend, you don't ascend. And I want to throw in one more thing from the Torah story that is read in a synagogue near you tomorrow morning. And that is the story of the leper. The leper. The person inflicted with a terrible infectious disease. And there's this whole regulation how to deal with the leper. And the Torah says, you've got to deal with compassion. You've got to bring in the people in our community who are the lepers. You've got to bring them in. You know why? Because the leper is the one who will bring the salvation. In our mystical tradition, it is going to be the lepers at the gate of the city who will bring the Messiah. The most rejected, the lowest, is going to bring us the highest. And that's inside of us. So on this Friday night, as we sang Mikdash Melech, rise, rise, as we invite ourselves to celebrate all these spring holidays, we want to ask ourselves, what's in my basement? What is the invitation that I, tonight, am going to listen to, to descend into? What's calling me to be in my soul so I can rise into spirit? It's not an easy question. But if you're here, you're already part of the Sabbath squad. We're here to rise, but first we've got to descend. So I'm going to invite us for the next 20 seconds to sit quietly and ask your soul. Hear your soul ask you, what am I invited to in my basement, in my body, deep inside? Where is there a place where I'm invited to de descend? What's calling me? And before we rise, I want to invite you to turn, if you feel comfortable, to somebody next to you and just for half a minute, just say, share, witness. What are you invited to? Where in our bodies are we invited to to go down into the basements so we can rise together from soul to spirit? See if something comes up and you might just want to sit quietly with this. That's tonight's invitation. Kumi, to rise from the lows. So take a moment, share. Folks on Zoom, I invite you to, if you're comfortable, put something in the chat, a word, a thought. Who, what's calling you inside?
will rise in a moment.